what we're seeing is there's nothing more important, no more greater priority coming out of the Vatican right now than to suppress those Catholics who want more traditional piety. It is still incredibly disturbing that this is what's going on in the world around us. And while this is going on, you know, the church, the Catholic church is eliminating uh, traditional masses for those Catholics who want more and not less. Like in Arlington, for instance, when they eliminated 13 of 21 traditional masses in their diocese every single weekend. But there are, as I say, lots of stories in the news that are of great concern to me, and I'm sure they are to you as well. I don't know if you caught, there were several stories over, over the weekend. One was the confirmation that, in fact, the Institute of Christ the King is being shut down in Chicago. Uh, we saw pictures, in fact, and it basically says, as of August the 1st, the celebration of public masses is suspended. Confession times are discontinued. The chaplain remains open for prayer. Because they refused to not say a Nova Sordo, they didn't, it's, it's totally against their charism on the first Sunday of every month, uh, and they still had public masses, Cardinal Supic shut them down. Well, the real message here is not so much about the Institute of Christ the King. This is about the lay faithful. The lay faithful who now have no options to go to a traditional Latin mass in the Archdiocese of Chicago on the first Sunday of every month. This was about eliminating all options so those traditional Catholics would be forced to have to go to another parish, to a Nova Sordo parish. Hmm, I wonder if I should parent my kids that way, how that would work out. Uh, there was also this uh, incredibly disgusting image out of uh, New York of a drag show happening inside of a church. Now, it is still incredibly disturbing that this is what's going on in the world around us. And while this is going on, His Holiness Pope Francis on his plane ride back from Poland, in fact, uh, made, you know, sort of remarks against traditionalists. You know, golly gee, is these horrible traditionalists. All right, so, you know, you have the Synod of Synodality coming up, right? So they've been doing all these listening sessions. I wonder how much participation there has been, and I wonder what we can expect as a result, right? Well, I looked at the pillar, and the pillar has an article that says how many people took part in the Synod's diocesan phase. And I wonder, gentlemen, could you guess for me which countries had the highest participation rate in the listening sessions that they hosted? Any idea? <laughs> Off the top. The right. highest listening. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. Participation so, in the listening yeah, sessions. Which okay, countries so I'm gonna do you say... think had more participation, more Catholics came out? And, uh, and wanted to participate so they could help to steer, because this is a democracy, you know. We can just do popular votes and decide what the Catholic Church believes and doesn't believe, you know. Well, at the risk of mm -hmm. being too on the nose, I'm mm -hmm. going to avoid mm -hmm. saying Germany, but I'm going to say instead— You're going to avoid it? Yeah, because okay. that's the obvious answer. Is it? Uh, I'm going to go to South America. S South America yeah. is your answer. Somewhere in South America. I don't know which country— You'd be wrong. Venezuela was on the list that uh, the pillar reported, and uh, they were only at 0.29%. It's less than 1% of all Catholics in Venezuela had anything to do with the listening sessions. Okay. Uh, okay, so hmm. Venezuela is not it's at the bottom of the list. Is it Germany? Uh, Germany, no. Germany really? is not. Oh, okay. So uh, can, should I give you the top three? Sure. Top three. How about that? Okay, top three. So uh, coming in at number three, Czech Republic. Really? At 2.02%. That is surprising. They are the third best performers in the world, according to this pillar report. Huh. 2.02%. Coming in at number two, the Diocese of Perth in Australia. Okay. Uh, All right. I, that surprised me, to be honest with you. I, yeah. Uh, these, blown are, away. these are surprising me uh, right now. They're at 2.94%, so just shy of 3%. Hmm. Uh, as uh, the number two in the entire world participation uh, in the uh, the Synod on Synodality, the listening sessions there. Coming in at number one, uh, of course, I would say this would be fairly obvious to me. <laughs> Coming in at no number one, uh, the Diocese of Limerick in Ireland. Oh, boy. At 3.55% participation rate. Well, that's interesting and all, uh, but let's see. How did America fare uh, compared to these heavy hitters, right? I mean, Perth, Australia. Who can compete with Perth, Australia? 
after all. By the way, this report out of the pillar also really made mention, like, especially in Australia, the devastating effects the pandemic had upon their mass attendance, by the way. So, uh, you know, they, if, uh, if their mass attendance hadn't been wiped out in this case by 34 percent, thanks to the pandemic, maybe the numbers would have been better. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, they are what they are, and there is a pittance of a participation in the Senate upon Senatality. But here are the numbers out of the United States, which I find uh, very interesting. Again, there aren't a lot of—he doesn't have, like, data for every diocese. Uh, the, uh, the Arlington Diocese, which, by the way, just as I said a minute ago, eliminated 13 of 21 traditional Latin masses in there. And their diocese following after Washington, D.C., you know, Chicago and, and others, uh, Savannah, Georgia. It's, it's almost as if there's like a mandate coming out of the Vatican sort of forcing them to do this. Definitely. And it just reminds mm -hmm. me of the quote from Pope Benedict the I mean, mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. what earlier generations held as sacred remains sacred mm -hmm. for us, too. And it cannot be all of a sudden entirely forbidden or even considered harmful. Yeah. How is it that uh, we can look at. The mass of the ages, which is what it's what's colloquially called, you know, for so many for so many years, mm -hmm. this is the mass that that made saints. And all of a sudden overnight, yeah, they're saying, no, this is not in unity yeah. with Rome. This is not this is not the authentic expression of the of the of the Latin rite. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, it doesn't. And, uh, you know, I'm not a uh, air quotes, square quotes, rad rad. So uh, listen, um, it, it, I'm not going to come and uh, bust down your door uh, at the uh, local Novus Ordo uh, suburban parish. Why are you busting down our door? That's the question. We, we want to. We're part of the same Catholic family. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense to to target them in this way. But let me go back to these numbers here real quick. Uh, uh, in the United States, Diocese of Arlington did not provide numbers. They had 145 uh, listening sessions. They didn't want to give the numbers out as far as how many participated. Covington, Kentucky. Oh, let me circle back to them. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas, 112 listening sessions, 0.28%, less than 1%, less than a half of a percent uh, participated in Fort Worth. Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, boy, phew. Uh, they also didn't give uh, a lot of numbers, but uh, it says approximately 13% of the diocese Catholic population completed the online survey. That is pretty remarkable. 13% is a very high number for the online survey as compared to others. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, their participation came in at 1.19%. St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg, Florida came in at 1.34%. Seattle, Washington at 1.87%. Washington, D.C. didn't give any numbers, but only 0.15% of their 655,000 Catholics responded to their survey. So compare that to Knoxville survey of 13%. Washington, D.C. basically didn't show up at all. Go back to Covington. Covington's participation is the best out of all the numbers that were reported on the Pillars article at 4.91%. Now, what's interesting is in a lot of these sessions, people show up, they get to say whatever they're going to say, but are the conclusions already drawn is the question. You know, Joe, I actually went to one of these listening sessions and because I just wanted to be able to say, hey, you know, they asked us to show up and give our opinions. So I did. And so in the Diocese of Galveston, Houston, myself and about six or seven other of my friends all went there. It wasn't a massive group of people there, but we all went and we expressed our opinions and I spoke to some of the people and they said, you know, to be honest, we kind of already have our talking points. <laughs> and I was like, yep, I kind of expected that. We gave our opinions about everything and that was pretty much it. It was, uh, like you said, it, it was pretty much a, hey, we're just gonna, we're gonna listen to you. We're yeah. gonna hear you. That we're, we're not gonna me. do anything with any of that information. Yeah. We're just gonna listen to you though. Yeah. That reminds me of uh, the company I worked with before it was very corporate and they would, they would hold these listening sessions. They would send out emails. Mm -hmm. Whenever anything big happened, mm -hmm. like, look, we're listening, man. <laughs> we want to hear what you have to say about this. Yeah. And if you had anything other than the, the main talking points, it would be like, yeah. well, I, well, hold on there. Don't go too fast there. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Slow down there, you. Really, what we meant was yeah. 
Well, we just want you to know that we're listening. Now. Yeah, and uh, if you could fill out those TPS reports, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, but that'd be great. The point they're getting at is like, hey, yeah, we're listening. I mean, we're not going to take anything you say into consideration, but we're right. listening. We well, heard it. in general, it's like, uh, I'm sorry, um, the lay faithful shouldn't have a popular vote yeah. on the liturgy, on which uh, dogmas or doctrines we want to enforce and which ones we don't. I mean, we're supposed to be salt of the world, right? We're supposed to be light in the darkness. The, the faith that was handed on, as St. Paul would say, by word of mouth or by letter, the tradition that we are holding on to, as St. Paul actually says in his, his letter, uh, is what should be handed on and, and passed down from one generation to the next. It's, I mean, this whole idea of embracing the world, progress, 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 I mean— it, it's not progress if people aren't progressing towards heaven. That's the only real progress we should be truly concerned about. As the fathers of the church commented on today's gospel, uh, unless you're getting people to eternity, it doesn't count, right? So it's really mind-boggling to me that, one, we would uh, actually try to say, hey, what are your opinions? What do you want? Not listen to them, but do it anyway, and then have these foregone conclusions, as we reported last week, you know, uh, the, the Vatican telling Germany, hey, slow down guys wait till we embrace this at the national level or the international level before we go too far off the end here at the end of the day nobody participated worldwide out of 1 billion Catholics almost no one actually participated what does that tell you 50 years of experimentation it's time to embrace the faith in its full glory we'll be right back more to come Austin Roots is up next